What's going on everybody and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit that notification bell, make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now with this video, we are jumping into Phoenix Song Echo issue number one. And this will be a new line really introducing us to who Echo is and who she is now that she has the power of the Phoenix. But for a quick recap, Echo aka Maya Lopez was born deaf, but otherwise she was a happy child, that is until Kingpin had murdered her father and blamed it on Daredevil, with Kingpin raising her as his own daughter for many years. She eventually learns the truth, rejecting Kingpin and joining the ranks of superheroes and that's thanks to the photographic reflexes that make her unparalleled dancer and a hand-to-hand -hand combatant. But still, she was the backup. She was the stealth agent. That was until the Phoenix Force came searching for a champion. With it pitting heroes against one another, it chose Maya. And even though Maya lost her last fight against her opponent Namor, no one really understands why, least of all her. But now she needs to go searching for what her purpose is out in the cosmos. And so with that being said, oh, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright gang, so as we dive into issue number one, we are immediately picking up in the fray, with Echo completely engulfed in flames, proclaiming that she is the Phoenix. Down at her feet, there appears to be a little girl absolutely petrified, also surrounded in flames, and this situation is not looking good. What it looks like is Phoenix is about to kill this little girl, not just her, but everybody that is inside of this building. But that's when we'll rewind about 10 minutes, picking us up in Hell's Kitchen, New York City. And right now, we got some guys that are breaking into this jewelry store, taking everything they can. That is, until they are met by Echo. Echo coming in, using the power of the Phoenix. She's letting these guys know that it's time for them to leave. But we see all of these thugs, they open fire on her. All of them shooting as fast as their fingers will go, only to see the bullets drop to the ground and they melt into a puddle of metal. With one of the individuals directly behind her, he goes to pull the trigger, only for the round to misfire. This giving her ample opportunity to turn around and she burns him to a crisp. And when she turns around to face the others, they have already fled. They took off as fast as they possibly could. This infuriates Echo, with her calling them cowards, saying they can run as far as they want, but she will catch them. And we see the flames around her, they grow hotter, they grow bigger, and eventually the entire jewelry store, it is engulfed in flames. And in the midst of her absolutely just losing control, we hear a voice, a voice calling out for help. And this snaps Echo out of this little trance that she's in. Recognizing someone needs help, she busts through the ceiling. Coming up to the next floor, she sees a little girl sitting in the room surrounded by flames. And as Echo goes to reach out for this little girl, the little girl wants nothing to do with her. Because the flames, they originated from Echo. And so she believes that she is responsible for all of this. And as she looks around, this entire building is on fire, and it's it's mostly residential. So people are screaming, they're begging to get out. We see the firefighters doing everything they can to rescue as many people as possible. And Echo is just completely distraught after what just happened. She was just trying to help people, but she can no longer hold her restraint. She has no restraint whatsoever. That she was just trying to help these people, but the only thing she did is cause a disaster. And so she tries to get away from here, sneaking out through the back, thinking that she maybe, maybe was able to get away, was left without anybody noticing her. But there was one person that caught on to everything that happened. And that one person is Elektra, currently dressing up as Daredevil. And if you're not keeping up with the Daredevil comics, you absolutely need to because it's really one of the best lines from Marvel Comics right now. Now, Elektra, she came to see if anybody needed any kind of help. 
she came to see what was really going on and come to find out there is a dead body there's a little girl that almost burned to death and it was all because of the phoenix force it was all because of echo now echo she tries to proclaim that this was an accident and electro lets her know you know that's a cute way of saying you just murdered somebody and this is where we see the phoenix really start to take over saying that they all deserved it electra saying even the little girl even the innocent lives that were there and electra tells her that you need to stay out of hell's kitchen there is a whole big bad world out there that needs protection you need to stay away from here because you do more damage than you have been doing good and the phoenix getting more and more angry believing that electra can't talk to her like that electra is ready to do this fight electra always wanting to know who was the better between her and Echo? And with Elektra ready to duel this out, Echo decides that she is going to take off, that she's going to run away from this, apologizing to her and saying maybe she's right. Maybe she doesn't belong here. And Elektra thinks to herself, you know, with someone who has such an immense amount of power, she truly is weak on the inside. And we see her flying over the world. We see her flying over Krakoa. Somewhere in the Great Plains, we see an individual that goes by the name of River fixing his motorcycle. Now, we'll get into who River is here real soon. But the most important takeaway is that Forge saw the Phoenix Force flying over Krakoa. Now, Echo has made her way up to the moon. She's gone up here really just to get some time to think, to try to figure out everything that is going on right now. Because she's believing maybe Elektra is right. Maybe I am too dangerous to be kept around. But she also doesn't believe that she belongs up here in the stars. That at the end of the day, she is a daughter of Earth. But this is when Brew comes in with a communication letting her know that they have some activity that is picking up in the Atlantic that she needs to go investigate because if it has anything to do with the Phoenix Force, she is the only one that can handle this situation. And so putting all of her thoughts to the side, realizing that, you know, if she has the capability to help somebody, she is going to do something. So letting him know that she is on it, she flies down to Earth, flying down to a small island in the Atlantic. As she begins to walk around, she notices two things. One, an X-Men is here. And two, this entire island, it shows no signs of life. Completely ruined, a scoured wasteland. But going up to Forge and making the introductions, Forge introduces himself and says that he is here to save her. Letting her know that she probably doesn't understand the power that she is packing. But Forge, he truly does. Because right now she is carrying inside of her one of the most powerful forces inside the entire universe. Capable of great destruction, the Phoenix Force is not something to be trifled with. And as she looks around, she asks what this place is. Because she's not recognizing it, but Forge lets her know that this is Easter Island. This is where she had the fight with Namor. He brought her here specifically to show the true destructive nature of what she is capable of and letting her know that there's a lot of information she truly doesn't understand. But Forge has come to educate her, to let her know what is ahead of her. And as they go inside this little facility that he has been sitting on, going inside, she looks at a bunch of screens and she sees the past Phoenix Force at full swing, at full destruction showing what the Phoenix Force can truly do if somebody who doesn't understand it has control of it. And Forge lets her know, now that you have seen this, you have an understanding of why I brought you here. The power is simply too dangerous, and he wants to separate Echo from the Phoenix Force. He wants Echo to give up the power. Now, of course, she's immediately opposed to this. The X-Men believing themselves to be just so wise and, and so smart, her believing them to just be simply arrogant. Forge hoping that she would see some kind of reason, but he brought a weapon that could put her down, at least temporarily. Because these psionic restraints, they are dialed in to the Phoenix's energy wavelengths. And so they're going to hold her in place, at least until he can investigate this power more, understand how the Phoenix bonds to her, 
and then be able to uncouple it trying to let her know that this will not be forever that he is doing this as a safeguard for the rest of mutant kind and humankind and this facility it starts to sink into the ground disappearing out of eyesight no one being able to detect where it is and he's not happy about this he's not happy about having to do this to echo in fact he even pities her, but he is too terrified of what the Phoenix Force can do to keep it out there uncontained, unchecked, untrained. But in the blink of a second, we hear a giant explosion, Forge turns around, and the Phoenix was able to bust out of everything. With her completely insulted that Forge would even attempt to try and contain the Phoenix Force. Phoenix lets him know that he is lucky he does not get burned where he stands, saying that they will never meet each other again. And as the Phoenix flies off, Forge vows that he will find her again. Next time, he's going to come with bigger guns, bigger restraints, and she is not going to see it coming. And so with her flying off, she heads to a location known as the Res. Because regardless if she believed that, that she can't control the Phoenix Force, regardless if she believed that Forge was just being a, a, an ass of a person, at the end of the day, he wasn't necessarily wrong. She has trouble controlling this power. She saw that back in Hell's Kitchen, where she burned down in an entire building and almost killed a bunch of people in the process. But the Res is a place that her father used to take her. It's a, a more of a reservation for everybody. It's a place for all tribes, not necessarily just native nations. A place for those who have lost their languages. They have lost their culture, their family connections. They lost themselves in the wake of genocide. And so this is a place where people can come together and build a new kind of family, a new kind of culture with everything mixed together. And as she looks around this place, she's looking for an individual that is known by the name of Chief, someone she knew back in the day, one of the elders from this place. And going up to a mechanic shop, this is where she runs into River for the first time. And this is the grandson of Chief. And he lets her know that Chief, he died some time ago, saying that, he, that she should probably go pay her respects, so on and so forth, but then he also says to go ahead and go to this address, meet me here, and we will talk more about this. And that is because River knew that she was coming. He says a friend told him that she would be arriving. And so picking up a little later that evening, she arrives at this house, a nice muscle car in the front yard. She goes to knock on the front door, and she has some kind of blast sending her flying right into the side of that car with river coming out not realizing he didn't take down the defenses with her arriving early he didn't have time to close down the defenses and so they automatically went to attack her as soon as she stepped on that front porch now she is obviously extremely furious about that but he's able to calm her down he brings her inside he go changes his clothes and this is where they sit down and they have a real conversation and we learned that his name is river walker and the elder that she once knew he was the one who raised river and as he grew up he discovered that he had a very unique power he can move his consciousness through the timeline on a person's ancestral line. And so you could technically call him a time traveler, but it's not really that simple. It's more of him being a storyteller, but he can tell other people's stories. He can access a person's ancestral line and allow them inside their ancestral memories. And obviously, you know, this is really hard for her to comprehend. It's hard for her to really wrap her mind around this. And so the easiest way is to simply show her. And at first, she's obviously very hesitant, not sure if this is some kind of trick or something else. But at the end of the day, she came here trying to figure out how she can control the Phoenix Force to find out more about herself, so on and so forth. And he is telling her that her past is going to be a direct link to why the Phoenix Force chose her and how she'll be able to control it. And so with them grabbing hands, we see a giant blast and her entire ancestral line is laid out directly before her. A long, long line of warrior women. 
And as she is taking in all of these memories, she screams for him to stop. She screams for him to get out of her head. Now, of course, this immediately freaks her out. It seems that, that he's stalking her ancestors, so on and so forth. Doesn't really understand why he knows so much about her. She really wants some answers right now. And he goes on to let her know that he would like to explain something that has to do with her mother. Now, Echo, she's never even met her mother. She has no idea who she even is. Only her last name, which is Lopez, which Echo ended up taking for her own. But he lets her know it's going to be her ancestral line that saves you when he comes for you. He being some kind of individual he only refers to as Shadow. But his shadow is falling on the ancestors, and it is spreading, and he is coming for her. He is coming for the Phoenix Force. And what she doesn't understand, it's not just him, it's her entire ancestral line. And if he succeeds, he won't have to take the Phoenix Force, because Echo would never be born. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. This is a great introduction to our new Phoenix Force, really introducing us to who Echo is, where she comes from, where her roots lay. You know, we have definitely seen Echo be playing her part through Heroes Reborn and so on and so forth, but they haven't really been actively using her in any real big capacity. And so for her to get this solo line, for us to really dive in to her being the Phoenix, I think it's going to be a very interesting miniseries. The artwork in this thing is absolutely fantastic. They make Echo just look absolutely phenomenal. The, the relationship with Forge, or if you can even call it that, the disdain that they have for one another now, Forge trying actively to be able to control the Phoenix Force, believing Echo doesn't deserve it. And then Echo believing she doesn't deserve it. We have Elektra believing, you know, most of the world believes she doesn't deserve it. She shouldn't be having it. More specifically, because she lost that battle against Namor. So no one understands why the Phoenix Force did what it did. No one more than Echo herself. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. If you have not yet, do me a favor. Hit that sub button. Hit that notification bell. Make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. And until the next breakdown.